I've been playing violin since I was three. It's uh, as much a part of me as my own hands. For most of his life, William Harvey dreamed of performing in concert halls. There are very surprisingly few professions where if you do a good job, the thousands of people will scream and cheer and clap for you. Graduated from North Central, studied at Indiana University's Jacobs School of Music and the famous Juilliard School in New York City. I played in Alice Tully Hall. I've played solo with the orchestra in Carnegie Hall. Made some good progress along the road towards becoming a solo concert violin. What changed? Well, I was a freshman at Juilliard during the tragedy of September 11, 2001. And five days after that, I ended up performing for soldiers from the Fighting 69th Regiment as they returned from a long day of rescue and cleanup work at Ground Zero. The music meant so much to them at that very difficult time, and so seeing how the music transformed them uh, completely changed me. And I wanted to do something with music outside the concert hall. I wanted to explore its power to change society, but I wasn't quite sure how. So William Harvey allowed the spotlight to fade on his own performing career, leaving behind the grandeur of the great halls. Instead, he ended up going to the last place on earth you'd ever expect to find a classically trained violinist. A long, long go, long, long go. In Afghanistan, music was banned under the Taliban. Listening to music, uh, making musical instrument, having a musical instrument, it was a crime. Dr. Ahmad Sarmast was intent on reviving a once vibrant music culture in his home country. So he created the Afghanistan National Institute of Music, a school where Afghan children get a formal music education. This is the only music education entity in this country. Dr. Sarmast hired international teachers, including three musicians with Indiana ties. Trumpet instructor James Herzog. Cellist Robin Rizek. And violin and viola teacher William Harvey. All studied at the IU Jacobs School of Music. We have children who used to work on the streets of Kabul, doing things like selling chewing gum, begging for change even. And now, instead of working on the streets, uh, they're learning music. It's extraordinary this school exists. Considering the Taliban's hatred of music, and that some people in this country still believe music is immoral children who are learning music, who are expressing themselves. It's giving them a reason to, to live, giving them uh, something of value. The children who grew up without music are now learning there are careers in Afghanistan for musicians. And we are believing that we can revive the lost musical tradition of Afghanistan through music education. It was a talent learned in the Midwest, now spreading to an unlikely corner of the Mideast. Every day what I see in Afghanistan is music pushing back against the darkness, against the notion that Afghanistan is a country known for war and for terrorism. Music is standing up for everything that is good and true and decent in this world. 
In Indiana, a man who once dreamed of becoming a concert violinist, now inspiring students to seek that same dream half a world away. Well, I could no longer saw away in the concert hall while uh, history was something that happened outside. It's time to take music outside of the concert hall and see what it can do.